Well, good morning. How are you all going? Got a good morning for you today. Thank you, sir. You see something unusual there. We're, we are having baptisms today at the tail end of the service, which we're excited about. So that's great. We've got three people being baptised today, which is wonderful. And I've got a word from God for you today that I believe is going to touch you and help you be effective with him and for him. So if, if you allow that to get into your heart and actually get his word to, to, to actually align your life to that. So why don't we pray and, and we'll get right into it today. Father God, we thank you that you are good. We thank you that you're faithful. We thank you even as we've sung this morning that you're worthy of all honour and glory. So we look to you even as we come to the word, God, we look to you to see what you say, that what will elevate you in our lives, what will increase you in our lives, what will lift your name up, that will bring praise and glory and honour to you, God, that, that you'd align us through your word to, to bring, bring you all that you deserve, Lord God, that, that in these vessels, God, the, these, hmm, these human vessels, God, that, that suffer from pain and sickness and other things, that your hand would be seen, that you'd be glorified, Lord God. In your mighty name, amen. All right, thank you, team. Wonderful, as always. That's good. Right, hey, I want to get straight into it, as I said today, so we, we leave time to, to get to these baptisms today. So if you'll open your Bibles to Matthew 14, we want to start straight in an account here. It's going to go up on the wall behind me, so you don't have to flutter too much for your word, but and open your phones, or if you've still got your paper Bibles, that's, that's good. They're allowed here. How are we all doing today? You're quiet. You seem tense. No, relax. <laughs> We're family, right? We're here together. Okay, I really want this word to get in your heart. This is a, a word that is actually really important in our lives, and, and, and it, it could come across as a, a hard word or a tough word to swallow, to be honest. But actually, it's something that's really of benefit in our lives. So in Matthew 14, let's look at what Jesus is saying and doing with his disciples, because he's teaching them something. In Matthew 14, it says this, when Jesus heard what had happened, this is where John the Baptist had been killed, he said he withdrew by boat to a private place to a solitary place hearing of this the crowds followed him anyway so he's trying to get away trying to have a moment to deal with his grief but the crowds follow him on foot from from the towns and when Jesus landed and he saw a large crowd he had compassion on them and he healed their sick he's a healer amen Amen. And evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. They said, we only have five loaves and two fish. They answered, bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking five loaves and two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. So we've probably, if we've been in church any length of time, heard this account before, right? But here's what I believe you need to know and what God wants to say today. Jesus isn't looking for you to send people to someone else to feed. Jesus isn't looking for you to send people away to someone else to feed them. I truly believe he's saying you give them something to eat. And I truly believe that God's looking for a group of believers who would take upon themselves the, the, the opportunity to feed others, yeah. to feed others, because it's the only way the kingdom will multiply. Yeah. It's the only way the kingdom multiplies, that we wouldn't just see the ones or twos or fews added to the kingdom, but that we'd see many added, because if we're disciples, then we're going to live according to what he's called his disciples to do, the mandate that he's given. We are going to go. Come on. We are going to go. We're going to make disciples. We're going to teach them to obey. And that's the key. 
that has got to be working in our lives, right? There's a key that we must understand and probably we don't like talking about in church. For this to happen, for that multiplication to happen, there's something that causes that in the kingdom of God, and the key's this. Just like the bread that was in Jesus' hand, when that was broken, it multiplied. When it was broken and distributed, it was multiplied. And I honestly believe, and from the Word of God, we're going to get into it in a minute, we must allow ourselves to be broken so that we can feed a multitude. And this is something that we don't like to deal with sometimes in church. We're, we're all good for the, the happy clappy, heal me, all those sort of things, which are great, right? We're, we're into that. We're into the goodness of God and all those sort of things. But when it comes to like a breaking, that seems really counterintuitive to what we think God should be like, right? But we've entered an upside down kingdom. And I don't know if you realize that. If you look at the things that, that Jesus says as he's teaching, they seem so counter to our culture, right? He's the one that says that the least is the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. Blessed are the poor because they will be filled. Well, that makes no sense. The poor have no capacity to be filled, right? No, they've got no ability to actually fix what they need. But he, it's counter, right? It's an upside-down kingdom. But, and in that kingdom... We must understand that godly brokenness is one of the greatest things we can possess. Godly brokenness. Because we enter the kingdom of God, and I really believe as we do that, we're faced with this question as we're entering the kingdom of God. Are we simply just trying to preserve our own life? Like, what, why, why are we coming? Are we just trying to save our lives? In Mark chapter 8, verse 34 and 35, it says this, Then he which is Jesus again, called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. See, the kingdom living we've entered as we've believed, as we've accepted Jesus, as we've become part of his church, as we've become his disciple, what we've entered is a life of laying ourselves down, of actually putting ourselves off and allowing Christ to live his life through us. And so the question is this, are we allowing God to break and reshape us so our capacity increases? Our capacity to, to care for others, to, to love others, to actually carry what other people need to them and so that we can distribute what we've received. Yeah. See, if we allow them to lead us into godly brokenness, then increase comes in our lives and we actually find, this is the upside down thing, in that brokenness, we actually find that we can be distributed to many. Yeah. Mark 6, 36 and 37, that's when the disciples say, send them away, God. That's their perspective, right? They have a need, send them away to the surrounding countryside, to the villages, and they can buy themselves something to eat. Let them sort it out for themselves. Let them meet their own need. But Jesus answers quite differently, no, you give them something to eat. You give them something. And so what are we actually willing to give? As we've entered this kingdom, what are we willing to give for his cause? Multiplication happens through breaking. So what are you willing to give so that the kingdom will multiply? So that souls may taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalms 34 verse 8 reminds us of that, taste and see that the Lord is good. But I love what it says after that. It says, it tells us this, blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. See, this is so important. That as we've entered this kingdom that's upside down where he challenges the things that we've been taught all our lives, the things that are going on in the culture around us, as he, he, he tells us to let go of them and he flips things upside down, it's so important that we take refuge in him and that we actually cling to him. Because here's the truth, breaking will be part of life. No matter who you are, where you are, breaking is actually going to be part 
of our life. The question is, what breaking are we going to allow ourselves to be under? So he's speaking to the religious leaders of the time. Jesus says this in Matthew 21 from verse 42. He says, have you never read the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. That's Jesus. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you. So taken from those who've got got it wrong, the religious leaders. Taken away from you and given to who? Given to a people who will produce its fruit. That's who the kingdom's for, for people who will produce fruit. And he goes on and he says this, anyone that falls on the stone, which is Jesus, will be broken to pieces, just like that bread, broken. But anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. Other versions say crushed to dust or to powder. Not just, just broken, but absolutely destroyed. So what breaking are we going to put ourselves under? The world's breaking or God's? The world's breaking, it comes through sin, it comes through shame, it comes through the cares and the anxieties of life, and it comes down on us. And all that leads to is destruction. Now you guys will have have heard me quote the scripture, John 10, 10. Hundreds of times probably by this point, right? But it gives us clarity. The thief only comes for one reason. What is it to do? It's to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And that's the breaking that comes. It actually comes to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they would have life and life to the full. So God's breaking is there to multiply the kingdom, to actually bring life. That's real life. To multiply it in us and through us to make us fit for his service. Jeremiah 18, and and the first few verses there is something that I've preached on many times. It talks about Jeremiah getting the word from the Lord saying, go down to the potter's house. He's saying, like, go look at this master potter, and I'll tell you my word when you get there. So he goes down to the potter's house, and he says here, he says, I saw him working at the wheel, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands, so it had imperfections in it. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you as this potter does, like clay in the hands of the potter, so you are in my hand. So this is what God's actually looking for. For us actually to come to the place where we would actually completely and truly put our whole selves into his hands. See, that molding and that remaking process isn't always a pleasant experience. Who can testify to that? <laughs> no one's braver. There's a few brave enough. Like, like I, I, I understand that. It's not always a pleasant experience, right? It's a process that actually takes faith on our behalf. We, we, it takes us knowing the nature and the character of God, who he really is, that actually keeps us in the process so that we don't bail on that. See, knowing that God is love, that he actually is love, knowing, having the faith and the understanding that he's love, not, not, not looking at what I'm experiencing right now, knowing that he's love, knowing that everything he's doing in our lives isn't to harm us, but is ultimately for our good. That's the faith bit coming in. That's why we know people, don't we, that have come to God, they're growing in Him, they've accepted the word right. They may, from our perspective, they may seem to be doing really, really well. They may have been in the church sort of six months, all the way through to someone who's been here 10, 20 years, right? But then God puts His hand on something. Something from their past, maybe a a really painful situation from his past where he actually wants to heal that and bring the good, but the process of that hurts a bit. Or he he asks them to give something up that they've held on to so dearly or to let go of a way that they've thought about themselves, that they've identified themselves in a certain way where God says, no, that's not your identity, that's not who you are, and it brings this, this pressure and this conflict in our life. And we all know people like that when they seem to be going so well and God just touches one thing 
and they're gone, right? And seemingly, just looking from the outside, it's like their trust in him actually only went that far. Their trust and understanding that he was a good God only went that far, and they're gone. And, and we know these people, right? And it's like they're running from God. They're running from their church. They're running from that community that would actually support them, the fellowship that would actually would help hold them through that process and, and, and encourage them with faith, but they distance themselves. And we all know people in that circumstance, don't we? And while they think they're escaping... While they're escaping the, the breaking that God's wanting to do in their life, they think they're, they're going to relieve the pain off their life, right? What instead is, happens so, so often, I've seen it time and time again over my years in Christianity, they actually find themselves not relieved, but crushed. Absolutely, their life starts to get destroyed, right? They get crushed. So instead of bringing relief, they actually put themselves under another breaking, and they get crushed to powder. See, we often think that reviling or resisting God's hand on our life and not allowing him to touch those things actually will make it easier for us. But the opposite is true. We end up totally crushed by life because we no longer have the power of God enabling us to stand. When we put him at a distance, when we put his people at a distance, then all those things he's provided for us to go through the process, we're holding them off, and we no longer have the power to actually go through that. Hebrews 12, verse 11, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Like kind of an other statement in the Bible, right? But later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. And that's a great truth, right? That encourages us to hold on, to stay in the process with God. But there's more to it that God wants to do. He doesn't just want to keep you through it. He wants that multiplication process to happen as well, something that goes beyond us. Let's read it again and read a bit further. It says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. However, later on, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees make level paths for your feet so he's directing that to us right he's saying there's a process to happen there's something that's going to come out of it you need to allow yourself to go through this process to be strengthened why why on earth it tells us so that the lame may not be disabled but rather healed now that's not you now that's someone else it's so that then you can go on to strengthen others so you can multiply what has happened in your life and bring life and strengthening to others. Multiplication happens through breaking. We don't like to talk about this, I know, but it is a biblical truth. 2 Timothy 2 verse 20 says this, In a large house there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes and some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. The breaking and reshaping is to actually make us fit for service, fit for the kingdom and for his purposes. It's to shape us more and more into the image and the likeness of Christ, which is the goal of our Christianity. I don't know if you know that, but it's to shape us. The process of godly breaking actually helps shape us more and more into his image. But the thing is this, we have a choice. We have a choice in this whole thing. In Matthew 21, 44, where Jesus says to them, anyone that falls on the stone will be broken to pieces. Yep. But anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. So we choose we get to choose to either fall on the mercy, the goodness, the faithfulness, on the love of God to walk us through that process, to do it with him, knowing that he actually came to give us abundant life, or we actually get to resist God and resist that breaking in our life. We get to choose to refuse, right? We get to choose to refuse to submit our hearts, 
our, our lives, our situations to his power and to his hand, and we, we can choose to hold off the potter, right, and say, actually, no, you can't recreate me. You can't do what you want to do with me. And that's our choice. You do have that choice, but the Bible is so clear. You will experience pain either way. You will. But if you give him control, then that breaking of us comes under the care of a gentle and a loving father who knows us, who knows what is best for us. It's under a potter who with great skill can pick out those things in our lives that shouldn't be there and actually transform us into a beautiful replica of Christ. Well, we can rebel against him and rebellion leads to discipline, we're told in the word. So we still face a father, but now we've got a father who has to deal with our rebellion. And he has to be heavy-handed to crush that rebellion out of us. In the hope, like the Bible talks about this, of handing people over to Satan in the hope that they will realize in the destruction and the desperation of their life that they have a need of Christ. Right? And that's, that is not the way to go. That is not the direction you want to go in with your life, to be crushed and utterly broken to powder. It's so much better to put your hand under the life of a father who is good and loving, who will actually carry you through the process and not just have it to end in breaking, but to end in multiplication, to end in the image and likeness of Christ, to end in your good, where actually all those things, those blessings that we see in the word actually come upon you. But at its core, the truth is this, that godly brokenness removes self. And that's the bit that, that we struggle with. If we allow that process to happen in our life, it will remove self and it will increase God in us. As John the Baptist recognized in John 3.30, he said, he must become greater and greater and I must become less and less. It's so important in the kingdom because multiplication has always been important to God. There's not a time it hasn't been important to him. It's almost as if God says throughout the word, if you look, it's like multiplication's a do or die situation. It's like multiply or die. That's why you're here. But if you're not living for that, there's death that comes upon it. To Adam, he says in Genesis 1, we're just going to take the quickest overview here. He says to be fruitful and multiply. In Genesis 1, 28, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves along the ground. To Noah, he says, to be fruitful and multiply. In Genesis chapter 9 and verses 1 and 7, he says that God blessed Noah and his son, saying to them, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. As for you, in verse 9, be fruitful and increase in number, multiply on the earth and increase upon it. He cares about multiplication. In Leviticus, he talks to his people, and we're told that God will actually do this if we put our lives in his hand and we trust him and live according to his ways, that he'll do the increase. He says, I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers and keep my covenant with you. Jesus instructs every disciple, every disciple. In Matthew 28, in the Great Commission, he, where he says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. He says to every disciple, Go into the earth and make disciples. Multiply. Increase. God wants you to multiply. He's looking for it. But the biblical truth and the bit that we don't really want to deal with sometimes in our life is that multiplication comes through breaking. And I get it, it's a challenging word, right? But if we've entered the kingdom and we're living our lives aligned to this word, then we actually just need to accept that that's the way it works in the kingdom. We have entered an upside-down kingdom that is counter to the culture around us. We just need to settle, okay, that's the way God says it works. That's the way it works. It's like God says, about being generous and sowing your seed, that then it will increase. We believe that, right? He says, have faith, pray for things, you know, believe for anything, pray in my name and you'll receive it. We believe that. We need to understand as we enter the kingdom that the other part we need to understand is that is just the way it works, that godly breaking actually produces a multiplication in our life we have to accept that the decision is for us 
it really is a, a simple but an incredibly hard decision I recognize. Are we willing to submit to God's process? When we were under the care of a gentle, loving father who knows best, who actually knows us the best and what is best for us, where we put our lives under that skillful potter who can, can with precision take out the things that shouldn't be there and transform us into the image and likeness of Christ, a beautiful replica of Jesus, that we look like him, well, we can resist him and have to be crushed and have that rock fall upon us and, and crush us to powder. It is an upside-down kingdom. The kingdom which is counter to the prevailing culture of the day that says, let me grow, let me be elevated, see me, notice me, validate me. Where, in fact, Jesus tells us you've got to become less and less and he's got to become more and more. Multiplication happens through breaking. And it's really what I felt God wanted me to share with you today. And like I said, that's a tough word, but I, I would rather my life was under the hand of a good God who is loving and gentle when he deals with those issues in my life than to put myself under any other hand or in any other situation where I'm crushed and bashed and destroyed totally by the cares and the situations of the world because I know of my God that I will come out the other side of that process. And I've seen it time and time again with Christians that have put their, their lives under that process. Yes, it's hard. It's, it's hard when he deals with the deep things in our life, but I've seen in an instant as they've let those things go before him that they've been totally changed and totally healed and totally set free. Painful for a real short time and then years of freedom rather than a moment of relief when we run from God and years of struggle, years of pain, of destruction. I've seen, it, I've seen it play out with my good friends in both directions, you know, those that have struggled through and put their hands in God's, God's under his instruction and they've gone through some stuff but they've come out the other side and I've seen good friends who were so strong in the faith totally destroyed even to the point of taking their own lives and and there was no reason for it other than they resisted and they walked away and they tried to run and get relief from those things that were going on inside them but the answer was found exactly where they originally were the freedom they needed was found where they were they didn't have to walk that path Come on, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for all your word in its entirety. I thank you that um, even as we get words that are, we go away and, and we feel, yeah, uplifted and encouraged, God, I pray that this word would actually do that for us, God, as we, we, we're faced with what your word says, what the path is to multiplication, what the path is to abundance, what the path is to real life and life that is lived to the full. God, as we face that, God, I pray that you'd really empower your people to see you as you are. God, I pray, I pray at the core of this that we would see you as that loving God, understanding that you are not against us, but you are for us, you are for us, you are for our good, that you want us to be created and shaped in a way that we're fit for noble purposes, God, for, for, for bringing you glory and honor, God, I, I pray that as, as we enter the kingdom, God, we'd realize that, that the way to life is through the death of self and the increase of Christ rather than trying to cling to things that actually rob us of life and just set that power and the, the liberty out of our salvation. God, I thank you that, you that you care about us so you present the whole truth to us. God, I pray that for each and every person that there's something going on in the world, even now, God, that, that is so tender, that, which is so deep, God. I pray that by your Holy Spirit that you would 
to show the gentleness and kindness of Christ that you would lead them closer to you in the process, not further away. God, that you'd strengthen them to trust you. God, even those with the, the biggest trust issues in life, God, you would show yourself as a loving father who can be trusted in this process. And I thank you that time and time again we've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. Multitudes of people who have trusted you and have found life. God, we pray that actually you'd lead us into life. And God, we'd never be foolish enough to walk away, to resist your hand on our life and, and find ourselves crushed and destroyed. And I thank you that this word is for our good. God, dwell in our hearts. I do pray, touch those things that need to be removed. God, you'd highlight them to us during this week that we could put them into your hand and find that freedom and that liberty that you've promised us. Life that is real life. Amen. So we've got three guys getting baptized today, which is awesome. We've got Patrick, um, Isabella, and we've got Marguerite. I presume they're already, oh, you're right here. Hey, why don't you come up on stage? I know that's, that's thrilling for you, judging by Patrick's. <laughs> Can we get the elders up as well, just to gather around these guys? Hey, it's a real blessing to be able to, to come in and do these baptisms today. You know, baptism's a real significant step in a believer's life. It's a really important step. These guys have, have decided to make that decision. In Matthew 10, 32, Jesus is really clear. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. And we make that decision to follow Christ privately it's a decision we make in our hearts and in our minds but it, it, along with that we want to make a public declaration and that's what today's about these guys have decided to make a public declaration to follow Jesus example they're saying I'm actually demonstrating that I have a changed life and, and I love for each of these guys each of their journeys are different but they've got a changed life as they've received Christ and they're also declaring today publicly that they're committed to God to living the way he'd have them live and to following him. And so it's a real privilege to, to have these guys being baptized today. We're, we're in just a moment, we're going to ask each of them why they've come to be baptized today. So just a, a short thought of, of, of why that is and, and let them share and tell you why they're here. And then we want, we want to pray for them as an eldership here. And, but also around somewhere, I think they're up the front there, there's clipboards and things. So once we've prayed for them here, we're going to put them through the pool and baptize them. But if you've got a word or something in your heart, you've got a, a prophetic word or something of encouragement for these guys today, we don't want them to go home without receiving that. So those clipboards are there for you to write it down. But what I'd love for you to do as well in the fellowship time afterwards, just share with them, encourage them, share what was in your heart. But please do write it down. There's something significant about having things on paper and recorded where you can later look back and this is what God said to me in this moment. You know, it'd be really good if we encourage them as a family and do that today. Is that all right? Where that might go? There you are. That's good. Well, I will start down here with Patrick. So um, why have you decided to come today? Uh, I grew up Roman Catholic, so I've been sprinkled, and I thought I need a complete submission. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Simple. That's good. As many of you four. Isabella. I just really felt that God was saying to me that I needed to get baptized, and I know that he's great plans for me in my life, so, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Have you, you Marguerite? Why have you decided to come today? Well, because I want to be uh, follow God, and He did it for us, so at least awesome. I can do. Awesome! That's that's great. That's great. Awesome. Hey, why don't you close your eyes, extend your hands to these guys? We'd love to pray for them right now, and just pray that in this moment that the Holy Spirit will really encapsulate Himself around them. That actually this this would be monumental, not just as a, a decision and something that they've done, but that actually it would be a real God moment for them. That they'd really notice from this point forward that those things that. Uh, uh, have been hindering, they are actually washed off, and that actually they, they experience that new life that we've been promised, right? So, your team, would you gather around? We want to pray for this Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. 
God, we thank you for this declaration today, God, this declaration of, of the desire to, to follow, God, to do what you've called them to do, God, each in their own way. You've drawn them specifically and individually, Father God, but that you've brought them to this moment of obedience and of following you. God, I, I pray specifically in this act of obedience today that, that something monumental would change for them, that Holy Spirit, that you would pour yourself upon them today, Father God. It wouldn't just be that act of obedience, but a God, there'd be a closeness in that relationship with you, Father God, that the ears would open, that they'd hear your voice, Father God, in a way that they've, they've never heard or never understood, God. God, you break off things that would limit them or have held them and changed, Father God, that you'd walk them through that process we've even talked about this morning, God, and, and bring them to freedom and life that is real life. Father God, we thank you that this is just part of the, the walk that they're making, God, part of the journey that you have them on. And God, you've got purpose for them. You've got plans for them. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Holy Spirit, touch them right now, we pray. Mm. Yeah. Touch them right now. Pour it out on them. That anointing, that anointing, yeah. your goodness would be displayed. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You know, Patrick, I was praying about you this week and um, I, I really felt that God led me to Romans chapter 4, verse 3, where it talks about Abraham and it says that he believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And, and I really felt like it's almost that simple for you, like that uh, if he says it, okay, I, I want to match it, almost like while well, you came today, that whole thing of being fully submersed, like that's important that, you know, he said it, that it happens this way, so I believe it and I'm going to do it. And I really believe that he's going to credit those sort of decisions to righteousness as he holds things up in his word and you continue to say, yep, okay, yep, that's what you say, that's how I'll live, that's what I'll shift myself to. And, and I believe out of that he's actually going to make you a real righteous pillar, that he's actually going to make you a stand of righteousness in your home and to others around you. And, and I think it, it's such... A beautiful thing because it's not forced it's not like you're having to work or generate this things it really is okay god you've said it i'm going to line my life up to that and i believe as you continue to do that that god's actually going to bring increase and blessing upon that and as you allow him to touch those things that um, maybe have been programmed of years of, of, of wrong thinking and years of pain even that actually he's going to strip those things away and just bring that full righteousness and peace and, and the goodness of the holy ghost yeah. into you I feel that even now, you know, that, that transference of your, your presence, yeah. 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 Psalm 24. Take the whole thing at home, but in verse 3 it says, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sw sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of salvation. Mm. And uh, just like Gareth said, it's, it's like the, I, I saw things dropping off too. It's, it's you, you're going up that hill, mm. going up. And, and the end of that psalm talks about the gates, opening the gates that the King of glory may come in. And, and I just see you being a reflector, a carrier of the King of glory um, in a very powerful way as, as you just walk up that hill allow him to purify allow him to bring righteousness and holiness mm. bless him lord yeah i've written down a pillar um, 1 corinthians 15 58 says be steadfast and movable always abounding in the work of the lord and uh, pastor gareth mentioned the pillar and god is you're going to use you as a, as a steadfast pillar immovable uh, always abounding in the work of the lord Patrick. <laughs> I just want to um, just second what Gareth just prophesied over you too. I had the word simple for you and I didn't, wasn't quite sure how to <laughs> present that. <laughs> but it's like, it's like it's so easy for you. And I just believe that um, the word that God gave me for you um, was that he just wants you to 
He wants to um, unveil just something of his nature to you as the shepherd. And that it's just as simple as a sheep following his shepherd. And that that's what he wants to, to open up, that leading and that guiding and that safety and the security and the trust and the peace that a sheep has in following his shepherd. That God wants to reveal that part of his nature to you, that gentle, guiding, um, just loving, loving heart of God towards you. And that, yeah, that it, will, that it's, that it, is, it is actually as simple as sometimes you think it is. It's just a matter of saying, this is what God said. This is what I'm going to do. Be led by your shepherd. Yeah. Um, I've actually got this. There's something for all three of you. Um, obviously, you're, you're in, in different um, stages of your walk with Christ. But it's in Joshua 1, verse 8 and 9. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So yeah, it's for, it's for all three of you that if you sink into the word and really meditate on it, that it is the... Um, the key to life. Mm. It is the roadmap for life and it, it gives you instruction, it builds you up, mm. it supports you and just yeah, step out in faith and be strong and courageous mm. knowing that God is with you and he's going before you. That's good, that's a good word and that's real similar of what I felt for you Isabella. I, I just, um, there's just a real pastoral gift on you, a sweet spirit of a worshipper and um, the scripture I had was from John 14 where it says, I will ask the Father and he'll give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, but I will come to you. And I believe that the spirit of God's in you and that, it, and that actually you can have confidence. You know, you know him. You know him and and despite your age and despite what people may say about you in your life or whatever you may face, that that spirit of God within you will always provide everything you need yeah. to do everything that you're called to do. Yeah. And I just, just really felt the security of God upon you. Yeah. 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 Just such a secure life yeah. and that, that he's got every detail of your life planned out yeah. and that because you know him, because you hear his voice, yeah. that actually you're going to walk that out with success and with freedom and liberty and that's going to be an example to many, many around you that, that, that knowing him and people are going to come to you and I think that's the pastoral thing. You're going to gather people who need to know who he is and what he's like, that he cares, he loves us and I, I believe you're going to help many, many yeah. people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Mm. Isabella, the scripture I wanted to share with you is from Deuteronomy, verse 7. It says, You may say to yourselves, These nations are stronger than we are. How can we drive them out? But do not be afraid of them. Remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. And the word I want to share with you today, Isabella, is I believe God wants to give you eyes to see beyond what you maybe see in front of yourself. And so, yeah, as we've talked about this morning, things will happen in life and there'll be things that come up in front of you and they look big, but remember your God. Remember what he's done from a young age. He's done amazing things in your life and he'll continue to do that. And he wants to give you eyes that go beyond through the spirit, just as your dad just said. And I also believe that he wants to instill a real courage, like the courage of Caleb, so that when he went over and went up on that hill and the rest all came back and said, it's too hard. Caleb and Joshua, they said, let's go. And I believe that God wants to instill that courage in you this morning as well. It says, um, yeah, Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and, we, and take possession of that land for we can certainly do it. And just as, as your dad said, there's that real security in knowing the spirit and knowing Christ and knowing who God is. He's done it before and he will do it again. He'll do it all through your life. Yeah, safe and secure in him. So cool. real simply when when Jesus was baptized said that the heavens opened and the voice spoke and it said this is my son whom I love and I am well pleased and I feel a bit of that this morning <laughs> this is my daughter whom I love 
And I am well pleased, but I really feel like that God wants to say to you, you are my daughter. I see you and I am well pleased. I am well pleased because you heard my voice and in obedience, you made sure that we wouldn't let this moment go past without letting you be baptized. You heard his voice and you walked in obedience. So keep doing that. Your father, his eyes are on you. He is well pleased with you. Yeah, it's good. Isabella, uh, Acts one eight says, "But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth." And uh, you have received the power of the Holy Spirit, and, and you will be a witness. You are. And you will be. And uh, I believe that we're going to see the evidence of the power of the Holy Spirit working through your life uh, more and more as you, as you continue to walk in the ways of the Lord. You know, Mary came and she broke a jar of oil over Jesus. And it says that the fragrance filled the room. And just that same scripture I shared in all teams this morning about the fragrance and it says in 1, uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. I believe every time you enter a room, and I, I just see it when you're up the front worshipping the Lord, there's a fragrance. You're, you're, you're an atmosphere changer. And, and it goes on and it says, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who have been saved and among those who are perishing. And just as I was talking to the Lord this morning, he said, evangelist. And you're going to be one, I believe, that will just reach out and bring souls in. And it we through that fragrance, people will say, what is it that she carries? What's that, what's that smell? What's that fragrance? What's that beauty? And you'll be able to just share Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Cool. Well, Marguerite, um, I was praying about you and I got a scripture from Isaiah 61. Sorry, I can't see past uh, my uh, hay fever. That's the word <laughs> I was looking for. Um, <laughs> It says this, to comfort, it says to declare, comfort to all who mourn, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And I, I really believe that God's just uh, really pleased with your decisions you're making. Yeah. And that actually in that he's gonna gonna change change what you've experienced, yeah. you know, from mourning to joy. Yeah. That something's gonna lift off you even today as you go down into the waters of baptism, that that something's gonna lift off your life. And I believe that God's declaring it that you're on the right path. Yeah. You're on the right path. You're the path to that freedom and that liberty and all those things that you desire and have, have wanted in your life that he's declaring it to you, yeah, actually this is what I'm gonna bring about in your life and so I really encourage you, you know stay the course mm -hmm. even as we talked about this morning allow them to do those things in your heart touch those things that have brought brokenness but that actually bring liberty and, and freedom and life to you and I'm really excited to see what God's about to do yeah. I'm really excited about what he's already doing in your life and the change that he's done and the drawing that he's done yeah. but I really believe that, that there's, there's just going to be a new level of liberty from today and that actually it's just yeah. going to progressively grow and grow and yeah. grow into freedom. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Marguerite, um, when, the, when the Israelites had come out of Egypt and then there's this whole period where they're in the wilderness and every time something went wrong, they'd always say, why did we do that? Why did we? They'd look back and they'd say, maybe we should have stayed there. But today I believe as, you, as you're baptised and you go under, under that water and then there's that, there's that burial, there's that burial of what's been and that you'll be raised to life. And so my encouragement for you this morning is just to look forward, to don't look back, 
And like Gareth said, there's, you know, whatever's gone on in the past, it's gone now. It's done. And everything that God has for you is in front of you. And that scripture that he even shared this morning that, you know, the thief comes to rob, kill and destroy. But he's come that you may have life and life abundant. And it's like, yeah, there's just this opening of life that's going to come over you. And that, yeah, don't look behind you. Don't just, what's gone is gone. Look forward. Keep your eyes fixed firmly on him. And you just, yeah, just watch life open up for you. So exciting. Really cool. I just want to confirm that as well, just that, that scripture that, that Gareth Shedder just had in my heart this morning for you as well. You know, that, that oil, that joy for mourning, beauty for ashes, that he's, that he's going to, those things that have caused pain in the past, he's going to turn them around for his good, for his glory, because if you placed your, your life in his hands, he's like, he's like, I just wants to make this exchange with you this morning. You know, that supernatural exchange, things that, how, how could he ever use this for his glory? So I will use it for my glory. He will, yeah, just encourage you with that. It's good. Um, Psalm 91, it says, Those who go to God most high for safety will be protected by God all powerful. I will say to the Lord, you are my place of safety and protection. You are my God, and I trust you. And, and then in verse 4, he says, He will protect you like a bird spreading its wings over its young. His truth will be like your armor and shield. And yes, I believe that's a word um, from God for you today. His, his truth will be like your armor and shield, and, and, and he's going to cover you with his wing as you rest in, rest in him and, and, and rest in the shelter of him. Uh, he will protect you. He'll cover you. Um, yeah. You know, we go through times where we're a bit like an unbridled horse, and it's it's as we come to that place where we allow the, that bit to be put in our mouth and the bridle to be put on, and just submitting ourselves to Christ, and. We use our own wisdom so much, and I believe God's just going to give you his wisdom as you call on his name. Uh, it's getting into the way of calling on his name rather than calling on our own wisdom. And uh, I just, I don't know you, but I, it's just what I felt was just that bridle. And it's like you're allowing the Lord to bridle you in, in a beautiful way and just allow him. Yeah, just allow them. Amen. Awesome. Yeah. Shall we do this? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So we'll move over the pool. I think we're throwing Matt in to test the waters. And um, why don't you guys come over to the side here and we'll uh, get you in in no particular order. Hope everyone can see or relatively see. Yeah. I, I really... Do, do want you to, as we're even doing this moment right now, to seek the Lord for words for these guys of encouragement. Write it down. There is pen and paper around. Rochelle's here. I see she's got that. And just write that down afterwards. Do spend the time afterwards. It's so important that we... Yep. Yeah, do the far side want to come a bit closer? Because that's all right. We can work. It's my wife with the practical instruction again. Well done. <laughs> Do you want to go first, Margaret? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Good stuff. Let's move these out of the way. Right. Um, turn around and face everyone. They want to see you. Make it quick. That's all right. Awesome. So right now, uh, Marguerite, I'll be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Yeah. God, we pray that this Holy Spirit will just touch you right now, God, as she's gone under the waters, yeah. God, that is all those things we've declared to her today, God, that you'd lead her into that goodness and that life, that your Holy Spirit would just fall upon her now, break off those chains, 
break off that past yeah, and bring her into full liberty in your mighty name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thanks, yeah, Mum. Come, yeah. Yeah, you, Come on no out now. No, we no, get, no, we, no, no. We've got a towel. Got a yeah, towel here behind you for yeah. up the ladder again. Here we go. Awesome. You can stand if you need to see or things like that. I, I guess front rows maybe don't stand. <laughs> you can work it out, we're good. Who's next? Patrick? Isabella? That's all right. Yeah. Don't have to be shy. Yeah. 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 You can you, you, you get a front row seat if you like, Viv. Yeah. Thank you. Well, wow. yes, brilliant. Well, Patrick, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we baptize you. That's smooth. <laughs> God, we do pray for that, that impartation, God, today. Father God, we thank you for the steadfast nature of this man. God, the goodness and just the faithfulness that you've already instilled in him, God. I, I pray for that absolute increase of the giftings upon him, Father God, that they would just come to light, they'd come to the surface, that you would yeah, you do special things from this day forward, that he, he truly would be that pillar of righteousness, that, 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 that steadfast uh, place that others can run to, and even as we declared today, that, that he'd be able to actually distribute that to others. Lord God, give him a new ability to distribute your goodness, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thank you that you're here. We, and now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Isabella, we baptise you. Yeah. 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 I pray right now that your, your peace and your presence would come upon her, Father God, that, that it would even be a cloak that surrounds her, Father God, that from this day forward that she, as we've declared over her, she'd know your presence. God, that it would be a cloak that's never removed. God, that she'd be constantly aware of your goodness, your faithfulness, as you direct the path of her life, Father God, that you'd, yeah, you'd just be close at hand with her, that she'd hear your voice and know your ways. 